Paul's letter to the Galatians chapter 3, beginning in verse 21. Is everybody there? Shout amen. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring. You are heirs according to the promise. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. Throughout this series of this month, focusing on what kind of church is this, we're going to be discussing several things. But in light of honor of this Sunday, but also in light of this sermon series that we're in, I want to spend a little while teaching on what we believe as regards to what, what kind of church is this, what does Scripture define for biblical womanhood? Church, we are a church that believes in God's promises upon womanhood. We believe in the God-given identity of the creator of the universe whenever he fashioned woman and made her out of the man. We believe in the purpose of the woman, leading in the church, leading in the home, and leading in the business place. We believe in the role of the woman, whether it be biblical or whether it be uh, rather not, not just extra biblical, but whether it be from the biblical mandates or whether it be in their partnership with their husband. We believe in the grace of womanhood because it takes us a, a calling and a grace and an anointing to walk out authentic biblical womanhood in the day and age that we are in. And so today I want to spend a little while and I want to teach and I want to preach and I'm going to shout and we're going to laugh and we're going to cry and we're going to spend some time in the word. But my goal today is to challenge all of us, whether it be men or women alike, of what it means scripturally regarding biblical womanhood, biblical motherhood, and what it means in a biblical brother and sisterhood in the church. So point number one today, we are the kind of church that celebrates biblical womanhood. Biblical womanhood, say that with me, biblical womanhood. Not society's definition, but God's definition. Isn't it interesting that everything around us is seeking to strip our God-given and God-defined identity? Whether it be changing the definition of marriage, changing the identity of sexuality, changing our identity and our gender. Friends, this is, an, this is nothing more than an attempt to undermine the very identity of man all the way back stemming to the Garden of Eden whenever the serpent began to tempt Eve. And the first point of argument regarding the consumption of the fruit was this. If you do this, you will be like God. And it was this deception that, that convinced them both that they had not been formed in the image of God when in fact man and woman had never been more like the image of God than what they were before his fall. And it has been from that point until now that our identities collectively, both male and female alike, have been under attack. Is it not unique to me 
that we live in a day and age now to where we have men seeking to be women, but yet we, we live in a society that, that propagates an empowerment of women. I'm going to go to this side of the room. We have a, a societal drum that is being beaten of empowering women, and yet we want to empower men that want to be women and give them more rights than, than a woman who was genetically born that way. Why? Because we are in an identity crisis. And we are, we are in an identity crisis in every area of the world. And friends, I want to emphatically state that we believe in biblical womanhood and everything that is defined per the Scripture. Church, the Word of God, shout the Word. The Word is the final authority to define us, not the darkness of this present age, not humanity, nor its social pressures, and especially not demonic influences. Friends, the Apostle Paul spoke clearly to this matter re regarding biblical manhood and biblical womanhood in Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. This is what Paul said. Friends, hear me. The Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. That which was is that which shall be. What we're dealing with now, friends, this is why we have to understand. The scripture is not an antiquated outline of historical misnomers. It is just as valuable today as what it was a thousand years ago, as what it was 2,000 years ago, as what it was 4,000 years ago. Why? Because humanity is broken. And we keep making the very same decisions over and over and over again. What does the Bible say? Paul said this, but as for you, he's talking to the church, shout me. But as for you, teach what accords with what? Sound doctrine. Say that with me. Sound doctrine doctrine. It's sound. It's foolproof. It's stable. It's not unstable. It's not fractured and it's not questionable. It is, say it with me, sound doctrine. Paul says it, but as for you, teach what is, what is in accordance with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in their behavior, not slanderers nor slave to much wine. They are what? To teach what is good and so train. Say that with me. To teach what is good and so train. One of the most heartbreaking scriptures in the entire Bible is this. And there came a generation that did not know God. Why did that happen? because they didn't practice what Paul was trying to share in Titus chapter 2. They did not see the value of propagating dignity and authority and righteousness and standard to the next generation. Friends, the generations that are to come are going to succeed and fail by virtue of what we do as the church investing in the next generation of the church. In the next 25 years, where will the church be? That's based on how we respond in training up our children. What does Paul say? They are to teach what is good and so train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to be self-controlled, to be pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands. Notice now that the word of God may not be reviled. Biblical womanhood is defined as reverent behavior, control of conversations that are slanderous, not being given over to strong drink and lacking of self-control, to be willing to teach what is good and train younger women to do the same. Friends, we need some older women who love Jesus and love his church to step up to the plate and start training these younger women what it means to lead their homes and serve their husbands and lead in their position as women. Friends, if we don't see the value of doing that, they're not going to get anything. Why? Because we're not doing our job. This world is in need of biblical womanhood just as much as it is in need of biblical manhood. 
I want you to note what the apostle Peter wrote regarding this same arena of conversation in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. Don't, do not let your adorning be external. Now, some people are going to take this scripture and run off in left field. I'm going to deal with something in just a minute. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and putting on of gold jewelry and the clothing that, or the clothing that you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is in God's sight is very precious. See, woman ought not stop. <laughs> Peter's point is this. Don't let your value as a woman be defined by what is external. Let your value be found in the hidden person that the Holy Ghost is creating on the inside of you. Why do you think Proverbs 31 says that beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. It's a matter of what's on the inside. Verse 5, for this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. <laughs> so, this, so this is what this means. Men, you get to go home and say, listen, a biblical woman calls Ashley Nicole. I need you to remember this verse. <laughs> I'm joking. Some of y'all, I just tell you what, not just, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking, but it's in the word. I mean, I'm mean, just saying, I'm just saying, I didn't, I didn't write it. Now I didn't, now, I didn't write it, but it's in there. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus. I ain't going to call out no husband in this room because I'm going to get you in trouble today. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm, mm. why do you think the Lord told Isaiah? Don't even look at him in the face whenever you prophesy, just turn your back and talk. Huh? You know, as Sarah obeyed husband, call, obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you are her children. If you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening sisters in Christ, May the riches of your life be found in the hidden person of your heart with imperishable beauty and a gentle spirit. Church, we celebrate the identity of our sisters in Christ because Christ is calling all of us, shout all. He's calling all of us to be standards of being and not judges of doing. He's calling all of us to be standards of being and not judges of doing. May it be that our living provokes others to righteousness and not perhaps our words of judgment. May our life be a standard that people look at and say, just being around them makes me want to be better. They're, they're, it's not their words, it's their being that challenges me to do better right? And we need that in this generation. We need more people who are being and challenging other people to be doing. I want you to remember that God is calling us to be the kind of church that celebrates biblical womanhood because we stand upon the word of God and not upon the wisdom of this world. Friends, the Bible says it this way, that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. It is the authority, no matter what the, what the politics or the philosophies or the ideologies or whatever, Ali, that you want to come up with, the word of God is the final authority when it comes to matters of life and living. So I need all of the wives in the house to start calling your husband Lord at home. I'm, I don't know who just said, come on, but <clears throat> y'all can laugh in church. Somebody like, oh Lord Jesus, I'm laughing. It's okay if you laugh in church today. Point number two, we are the kind of church that supports mothers in their mission. Recently, my wife had, had uh, gone out for a day. And I told her, I said, I'm going to keep all three children. Pray for me, saints. Come on, somebody. Pray for me. So I keep them. She comes home. Thank God nobody died. I recently saw a little hashtag. It says that my job today is to keep the tiny humans alive. Right? 
My wife comes home. I said, babe, I said, I'm just going to tell you, I have a newfound respect for you. And she says, why is that? I said, because I barely survived one day. Come on, somebody. I don't know how you do this every day. There is a grace and an anointing on the women that we men don't have. We, we just don't. But we're going to be the kind of church that supports mothers in their mission. For those who were mothers as well as for all of, the, uh, all of my sisters who have yet to become mothers. I want you to know that we as a church, that we honor you and we support you in your task of raising your children in the house of the Lord. Mothers, I celebrate and I honor you in the diligence of all matters to do your best in raising your children in the admonition of the Lord. For the mama who's tired today, for the mama who's scared that you're not doing enough or that you're not enough, for the mama who is afraid of failure or afraid of failing her family or, or her children, or the mama who is overwhelmed with, 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 with life and motherhood and being a wife, I want you to hear your pastor today. A mother who does not care would never worry one moment nor even ask the question if she was doing enough. The fact that you are struggling is a cornerstone on which that you can rest upon because that tells me one thing, that tells me that you you care. And church, I want us to put our hands together and I want us to celebrate all of the mamas in the house who are doing their best to tend to their babies. Proverbs 31 verse 25 through 29. This is what your Bible says. Strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come. For most mamas, they are consumed with worry. I've seen this in, in, in my own home, and I'm not sharing this for embarrassment or anything. Guys, this is just life. Being worried about having enough diapers, enough food. Being worried, are, are, are they sleeping enough? Are they not? Being worried about money and worried about the house being clean and worried about traveling and worried about this. And, you know, are they growing enough? And, you know, and, 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 you know, and, and as far as education and, and all of these things, are, all of you mamas, your minds are wearied with so many things. But I just want to encourage you of what Proverbs 31, 25 says, that strength and dignity are your clothing and you are called to laugh at the time that is to come. Do not live in angst and worry. Obviously, yes, prepare and have a plan. I'm all for that. But the Bible says that we should laugh at the times that are to come and not be riven with anxiety and fear. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and she does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Mamas, laugh at tomorrow because God is more than able to meet that need when it comes. Mamas, one day the struggle is going to be worth it. One day that bitter season is going to bear sweet fruit. One day those difficult times with, with those difficult children are going to pay in dividends because you did well. Mama, don't stop praying. Don't stop pressing in. Don't stop prophesying over your babies. Do not stop decreeing the word of God over them. Do not stop pressing into your faith because ladies, your babies are watching you endure and they're learning what it means to endure hardness as a good soldier under Christ Jesus because you have kept pushing forward. You are teaching them by the very example of scripture what it means to press in and press through. And friends, you don't realize how much your babies are watching you until they're grown. Your diligence is going to bring a fruit of harvest, I promise you. Well, pastor, you don't know what I'm navigating right now. I may not, but I'm going to tell you something. I know what the word of God says, that every one of his promises are yes and amen that the word that, that, that he has sent forth is not going to return unto him void, which means it's going to accomplish that which he has sent it forth to do in us. And that includes your children. 
Well, pastor, what about my wayward babies? You keep pressing in and trust God with the results. I want you to remember today that we are the kind of church that supports mamas in their tasks. And mama, you're doing a great job. And to the single mamas in the house, as your pastor, I'm proud of you. For having your babies in the house and walking and pursuing and tending to them. I promise you it's going to be worth it. Mamas, I'm proud of you. Seeing your babies in the front mall area, it blesses me. So many of them run up and hug me. And uh, I spoke with Jonathan Abel. Jonathan and Emily Abel sit right back here. And and, uh, recently, uh, over the last month or so, uh, Jonathan and Emily's little girl, every Sunday, she runs up to me. She hugs my leg. And then she backs up and and, and she grabs her dress and she goes. Because she wants me to compliment her dress. I'm like, baby, you, you're beautiful. I love your dress today. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It, that, you. Guys, y'all have no idea how much that blesses me. Alejandra's son, David, running up with his boots on, hugs me, and then he goes. Because <laughs> he's like, I know you're going to compliment him. Right? Just, just, I'm, I'm going to help you. Just, just go ahead. Right? I love that. I love that. I love seeing our church growing in every area. Adults, children, young adults, our youth. We are growing and we are reaching people. And mamas, all of that is a direct result of your investment in your babies to be in the house. Hold the line. Hold the line. To the mamas and wives under the sound of my voice, you hear me. You hold the line. I don't care what the school systems do. You hold the line. I don't care what what politics or, or, or policies come out. You hold the line. Because if you don't, who else is going to? Hold the line. And point number three today, is everybody good? If I can have Pastor Brad to come be with me on the platform. We are the kind of church that encourages our sisters to pursue a lasting faith. I believe that one of the greatest, I'm going to take a a pause here. I I believe that one of the greatest points of reference that we have regarding the ecclesia is actually found in a passage of scripture that might seem a bit odd for me to use, but allow me to share this. Whenever the apostle Paul is giving instruction to his son in the faith, Timothy, regarding conflict resolution in the church, This is what Paul tells Timothy. He says, when you have to rebuke an older man, approach him as if he was your father. If you have to address an older woman, approach her as if she was your mother. If you have to deal with a man of equal or younger age, approach it as if he was your brother. But when it comes to a matter of a woman who is close to your age or younger, you address her as if she was your sister with all purity. Friends, we are a family. We are the ecclesia of God. We are the body of Christ. We are fitly joined together for all of us to do our part of the work of the ministry. So whenever I say sisters... And forgive my voice today, I'm dealing with some sinus stuff. Whenever I say to encourage our sisters, I want to remind you that that means no matter younger or older, wife, child, friends, we should be encouraging the women of our church, no matter the age or station of life, to be pursuing a lasting faith that will endure until the end. Church family, one of the greatest victories can, can become the greatest rewards whenever we pursue things that are eternal and not temporal. It is my heart and my desire for this church to be the kind of church that encourages one another to, to pursue a lasting faith. A lasting faith that doesn't just uh, rather encompass a fruitful faith in God, but also a grace-filled faith for one another that are a part of his church. I want you to notice that found in Hebrews chapter 11, we we discover a great hall of faith. 
Men and women that God used powerfully. A record of not only God's faithfulness to his people, but also a faithfulness from God's people to the will of God itself. Friends, it should be our greatest desire to encourage our sisters in Christ to pursue a lasting faith. I want you to notice with me the words of the author of the book of Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 30 through 40. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. For the mama who feels that she's been walking around the wall of her marriage, believing for God to turn her husband, trust the Lord with the walls of Jericho, because one day you'll be shouting and the walls will be falling and victory is going to come. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given friendly welcome to the spies. Friends, no matter your history, God can rewrite your story. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak. Samson and Jephthah of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. They were made, uh, excuse me, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. And I am decreeing today in Jesus' name that there are, are some dead relationships, whether that be with family or with friends, that the Father is going to begin resurrecting today and you're going to begin to receive back some things that the enemy has sought to take from you. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. Friends, mamas, wives, whenever your friends crack on you, whenever people make fun of you for standing on biblical principle, friends, I'm going to tell you something. The reward of you standing on the word will, will be far greater than you cowering to a society that is godless. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, and they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, and mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy. I want to challenge all of the mamas in the room. Be the kind of woman that this world is not worthy of. Live according to a righteous standard and fully embrace what the Scripture says and live according to that book no matter what comes and no matter what anybody has to say about it. Of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and, and in dens and caves of the earth. And all of these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should be made perfect. Mamas, I want to reference here. They were commended through their faith, even though they did not receive what was promised. Even when it doesn't look good, keep believing. Even when it looks lost and dead, keep praying. Even when it looks irrecoverable and there's no way to get it back, keep standing on the word. Because our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that works in you. Just as in this last chapter highlights, Enduring faith doesn't mean that all things believed upon will happen. It doesn't mean that they will not only perhaps not happen in our lifetime, but even afterwards. But rather having an eternal faith in so that trusting the Lord will cause all things to work according to his purpose. Thus in closing to my sisters today, to the mothers who are represented here in this house and in this faith family, to the mothers that are going to be, 
I'm seeing all kinds of posts from, you know, I got two staff persons pregnant, about to have babies, more families in the church getting pregnant and having babies to all of the mothers who are about to be mamas and to the women that Christ has called unto himself. May you be encouraged in your trials. May the peace of God empower you by his spirit to endure, to heal, to press on, and to cling to his promises even when you might not want to. May you not become weary in the call of womanhood or of motherhood. May your hearts be reinvigorated today for the things of God and may disillusionment be far from you. It is my prayer that you are encouraged today to pursue a lasting faith and not let the cares of this life overshadow Christ's divine call that is upon you. It is my prayer as your pastor that the peace of God guard you, that the peace of God guide you, and that the peace of God sustains you unto the day of the coming of the Lord. Because we are the kind of church that believes in you. <laughs>